If there is one animal in Delsai that is not shy to announce its presence, it is the golden marmot. Most of us who visit Delsai get to see them, but we don't really get to know them. For instance, they have a highly developed security system. The backbone of that security system is that sentry up there. Efficient routes to feeding grounds. I am on a marmot trail and along this trail, these clever little creatures have dug for themselves escape burrows. And teeth that keep on growing throughout their lifetime. To really find out how incredible these guys are, I become one of them. But I don't think I can survive on a vegetarian diet. Sorry fellas. I am in Delsai to film its spectacular wildlife. In this particular episode, I am after the golden marmots. Marmots are the most conspicuous animals here in Delsai. You see them standing alongside their burrows doing nothing much except for emitting those high-pitched alarm calls. But there's more to a marmot's life than just making those alarm calls. These giant ground squirrels are highly social and intelligent animals. A marmot colony like this one consists of burrows, marmot highways, food source and escape burrows. Now this burrow system is central to the survival of these marmots. During the long and cold winters when nothing is able to survive above ground, these marmots hibernate in a chamber inside this burrow system known as hibernaculum. And they seal the entrance of this burrow with an earth ball composed of soil, gravel and dung. This traps warm air inside the chamber and sort of creates a microclimate in the hibernaculum. Another way that helps them conserve energy is by hibernating socially. In fact, juveniles hibernate with their parents. Juveniles with litter mates suffer lower mortality in the cold winters. During hibernation, their metabolism slows down. They breathe only two to three times a minute. This is impressive, but marmots still have to consume a lot of food to survive. Well, here I am next to a marmot colony and it has all a marmot needs to live a happy life. The number one concern for any animal that wakes up after more than six months of hibernation is food. And this habitat has an abundance of marshy vegetation and that is why these marmots have chosen this as their nesting place. But eating a lot of food makes you fat. Being fat makes you attractive to predators such as foxes, snow leopards, eagles and here in their side, bears who are aggressive diggers. But for an animal that is adapted for a fossorial or partly subterranean life, moving around on land is pretty ungainly and it makes you susceptible to predators. So you have to have a security system that works. And for marmots, the backbone of that security system is that sentry up there that keeps an eye out there on the open for any potential threats. The marmots feed peacefully on the lush grasses of Delsai, confident in their sentry's ability to raise the alarm in case of any danger. I want to see if the security system really works. I move in to their territory. A sound that no marmot can ignore. The marmots scurry back to their main burrows. Then 
that's pretty effective. But what happens when someone gets stranded and it cannot make it back to the safety of the main burrows? Well, these guys have a trick up their sleeves. I am on a marmot trail and along this trail, these clever little creatures have dug for themselves escape burrows. So in case any marmot gets stranded out there in the open, it can use this burrow as a temporary refuge from any predator that's after it. Quite clever, aren't they? And they have personalities too. One particular marmot is either too social, desperate, or fascinated by my antics. It is giving me unique access. Now these are large rodents weighing up to 9 kilograms. And a marmot is specially designed for a fossorial or partly subterranean life. Look at the body. It is streamlined and flexible and it enables the marmot to push its way through narrow holes and bend in sharp turns. Look at the flat head. I mean the eyes are located close to the top. This serves a very important purpose. It enables this marmot to scan the ground above while still submerged in the burrow. And then of course there are the funny looking incisors on the upper and the lower jaw. Interestingly, these incisors keep growing throughout the life of a marmot and they keep them sharp by a constant gnawing. For digging, marmots have strong and blunt claws. But it's not just the claws that make them excellent diggers. The pads on the digits helps to dig up the earth as well. I mean, these are short-sighted, but their sense of smell is pretty good. The furry coat and the small ears are adaptations for living in a cold environment. It's such a pleasure spending such a close and intimate time with this one. It is an exception. I mean, other marmots in those high are pretty wary of human presence, but this one in particular is pretty friendly and I'm able to get pretty close to this fellow. I'm gonna push the limits and try and see how close I can get. Wow. It's a beautiful fella. I think these marmots have welcomed me into their family. Why well, I can't fit into that burrow? I think I have become a remember, look at this. This is incredible. But I don't think I can survive on a vegetarian diet. These guys are purely vegetarian. Sorry fellas. Golden marmots live in obvious social groups. Usually monogamous, but groups can contain up to seven individuals. These guys have overlapping home ranges and are friendly towards each other, to the extent that they tolerate immigrants. But all of these social and survival skills cannot protect them from habitat loss. The golden marmots of Teosai face several threats. One is the overharvesting of the grasses they eat. Gujars visit Teosai to fatten up their livestock on the fresh grasses of Teosai. This results in a degradation of their habitat and less food for the marmots. Growing tourism on the roof of the world is impacting marmots in new ways. The impacts of climate change will be harder to manage. As our planet heats up, its wetlands dry up. Climate change is damaging to the wetlands both the marmots and gujars depend on. Our challenge as a nation is to find a delicate balance between human and wildlife needs in an ever more challenging environment.